Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Wonderful. I did sip on it previously. And it's ever so slightly cold. I have a busy morning today. Today is Tuesday, February 15th. And in this, um, I don't know, coming together of the various Venn diagrams of my existence, today is uh, my author spotlight day for Faro Feb 2022, Fantasy Romance February. So I posted a video talking about me and my books. I've got all my books piled up here because I was like showing covers. Uh, and there's lots going on with Faro Feb. I also have a post in the Faro Feb Facebook group who are wonderful. And so, yeah, that's going all, all this month. Lots of wonderful authors participating. So you could check that out at farofeb.com. And so I did that. And then I'm also completely unrelated, but I said that I would uh, be one of the fantasy novelists featured in the uh, Read for Pixels project, um, which is advocating against violence against women. And so I am doing a Our Fantasy Reddit AMA, Ask Me Anything, today. And I so I'd get on there. And both of these things were supposed to be up by like 10 a.m. Eastern time, which is 8 a.m. Jeffy time, also known as Mountain Time. But you could call it Jeffy time. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I think I've talked about this before, but it always kind of mildly irritates me that people don't include Mountain Time on the listings. And yes, I know we are the slice of the country with the lowest population. Well, unless you count like the ones that include like Hawaii and the Virgin Islands, I think those are even less, but nobody even knows what those are called. I know the one with the Virgin Islands is called Atlantic time, but I, I don't know what it's called where Hawaii is. So maybe it's Hawaii time. We could call it that. So anyway, um, but, you know, like they told me to have it posted by 10 a.m. Eastern Time or 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And it's like, what about Mountain Time? Jeffy Time. But I let it go because I'm, uh, I'm forgiving that way. So I'll include a link in the show notes for the Pixel Project. Uh, they really are doing great work um, working to eliminate violence against women, which... I'm sorry, uh, if you don't advocate for uh, a project like that, I, I can't help you. <laughs> so, so yeah, both those things had to be up by 8 o'clock my time, and I did pretty good. I mean, I got it like within 10 minutes of 8 o'clock. And now I am doing just my usual posting with you guys. Hi. Uh, yeah, so... I'll put a link for the, um, the, our fantasy Reddit fantasy group, uh, AMA. It's your chance to come in and as build, ask me anything. Um, yeah, happy to, to answer any and all questions, whatever you guys come up with. Uh, things are percolating along pretty well here at Casa Jeffy. Um, Casa Kennedy. It's funny because, you know, my husband's last name is not Kennedy, but he gets, he's very accustomed to being called Mr. Kennedy. He even gets mail to Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> uh, he's a wonderful man. So, um, let's see, where am I at? So I did finish the revision of Grey Magic yesterday. Uh, those of you who listened yesterday, you knew that I only had like 10 pages to go. So I got those and I added 2,300 words. I didn't add 3,000 words, but 2,300, considering I spent an hour revising, I was happy with that. I took it. I was pleased. I didn't work longer than that. I'm trying to keep myself evenly paced. Uh, so now I've got almost 95,000 words on this book and somewhere in the neighborhood of a little less than 11,000 to go. Um, 
so, so far on target to finish by Friday. I think it's going fine. Corrine's read, assistant Corrine has read uh, what I've written so far, and now she's reading the chunks as I write them. And she says it's good. Of course, she says everything I write is good. Although we've had this argument before. She says she would tell me if it wasn't. Um, but she said it's really tense and exciting. So yay me. Yeah. So, and I, I know how it's, I think I know everything that's going to happen now. I've been having various um, epiphanies on the story and how things are going to end out. Um, as I mentioned yesterday and probably before this, I am um, definitely going to be writing more books in this world. As you read this book, you're, you're going to see where it's going to go. And Corrine is a big fan of where it's going. She's like, I know what the next book is going to be. And so it's exciting, huh? I may post a snippet later today uh, to go along with my author profile stuff. Yeah, I'll do it after I'm done with this podcast. Exciting. Let's see. Oh, um, I'm not very organized, but at least I'm not as badly book brained as I can be sometimes. On the R Fantasy Reddit, it'll say on my post, but I will come back and answer the questions tonight. So you have all day to think up your questions and post them, and then I'll pop in and answer them this evening. So, uh, yeah, yesterday was a good day. I got those words done, and then I, I actually got through a ton of CIFWA email. <laughs> I try to go for inbox zero. Yes, I am one of those people. I my inbox tends to be like a to-do list. I try to keep it to inbox zero. I get behind. And um, so it goes. But I did catch up a lot of things yesterday, and that felt good. I saw an interesting, I guess it's getting passed around, but I saw an interesting article, and I will link to it, in the Atlantic on friendship. And you guys know this is one of my themes. So there was stuff in there that was really interesting, um, including, and I do have it pinned up here, that, let's see, I'm probably going to have to, let's see if I could do a search. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in 2009, a Dutch sociologist, we love Dutch people, don't we? Assistant Karina's Dutch. Uh, the Dutch sociologist, Gerald Mollenhorst, I'm probably not saying that with enough phlegm, but you get it, published an attention grabber of a study that basically showed we, we replace half of our social network over the course of seven years. Uh, isn't that interesting? Because you guys know I have been you know, really interested in the fact that some friendships seem to come and go. And the, the article's very well done. I understand why people are passing it around. And I, I in general, agree with it. Um, there are a few things that I think bear discussion. And I'm having drinks with my friend, Megan Mulray, tomorrow night. And Megan is, um, <laughs> I sent her the link to the article and I said, here's your homework assignment for discussion tomorrow night. And she said, on it, which I think, it's just like a perfect example of our friendship. Um, I love that. I could send her an article and say, read this so we can talk. Uh, I don't know that we'll have much to debate on it, but I thought it was very interesting. The person who posted it into my timeline said that she didn't feel like she had these big friendship breakups, you know, that she knew people drifted out of her life, but that she didn't feel like... Um, she had these breakups that the article talks about. And the article really explores how we, in a way, sideline friendships uh, compared to romantic relationships or uh, family relationships, which is something that you guys know I've talked about a whole lot. And that they, the author was arguing, who, and she said Jennifer, a few years younger than I am, but that's that's all and she was arguing that maybe those friendships should be more important and that for her losing a friendship does feel like a divorce and i so i found it very interesting that the person who um is 
also a real life friend as well as a Facebook friend. We have to make that distinction now, don't we? She, uh, you know, linked it into my timeline. That's where I saw it. And she said that she felt like she hadn't had that experience and nothing against her. And this may be a generalization. Actually, it is a generalization that the people who say that, I, I know a few other people who say that, that they don't feel like they've had these friendship breakups. I think that there's the people who actually tend to ghost other people and, and leave the, the ghosties feeling like, what did I do? Why did our friendship end? Whereas these people are like, tra -la, tra -la, you know, friendships come and go. <laughs> You know, we, and that is something that the author talks about is how we view friendships differently. And she mentioned it's framed around a particular friendship and two women who are trying to put together a book and, and how she could see their friendship disintegrating over the course of trying to put this together, which I think thought was a fascinating frame. But she also talks about a pair of friends who actually went into relationship counseling when the friendship had become rocky and i don't know if it, i mean i think we all re react the same way where we're like really you've got a relationship counseling for a friendship but i mean if you would do it for a, a romantic partnership why not do it for a friendship and she mentioned someone else a friend who says well isn't that the opposite point of having a friendship that a friendship is something that it's special because you opt into it because you don't have to do all of this emotional labor, like going to counseling to preserve it. But the author, um, a sister, Jennifer makes a lot of the same points that I've been thinking about that. A spe and maybe it's our, our generation, but she said, you know, as we are growing older, that we are becoming aware of that we're going to lose our the generation that's older than us will no longer have that support network. Uh, a lot of us don't necessarily have children. I have step I have stepchildren, but you know it's we're we're looking at who will be with us in our older years, and probably it's going to be our friends, right? I mean. I, I look around and I see that, uh, you know, Grace Draven, I, I keep, I've been mentioning Grace on here a lot lately, but, um, you know, Grace and I have our particular fantasy built up about like when our husbands are gone and we live together and what we'll do. Uh, it, it may or may not include a house on the Mediterranean and Cabana Boys. So, you know, I mean, it's not a real super realistic uh, plan, but at the same time, it's something that we are both aware of. Um, you know, her husband had a, a medical emergency recently and she's been pretty open about what happened with him. And my husband has Parkinson's. And so it's an interesting thing being a woman of this age and looking at the fact that, which really sucks. And I even said it to my mother, my mother, who's been twice widowed, that the first time was, you know, when she was quite young and my, my dad, her first husband, uh, died. He was an Air Force fighter pilot and he died in a, in a plane crash. So, and he was young, but then my stepfather died of um, progressive supernuclear palsy, a kind of Parkinson's. And now her third husband is getting older and it has Alzheimer's. And, you know, you look at this thing where as a woman, <laughs> it's totally unfair, but you know, that statistically our husbands are going to die before us. And so then what do we do? Who, who do we have? I didn't mean to make this so sad, but you know, it is looking around at who, who matters in your life? Who, who are you connected to these networks? And someone, she quoted someone who had sarcastically said, um, yeah, but your friends are not the ones who will take care of you when you have dementia. And some of us are looking around and thinking, well, Actually, it may be our friends who will do that. It's, it's a shift. Maybe it's a generational shift. But anyway, it was a very interesting uh, article on uh, friendship. And I'm looking forward to discussing with Megan because we have talked about friendships and how 
you know, this, this seven year thing is really interesting to me because, you know, that, that puts me back to like 2015, half of our social circle. So, you know, you still have people who've been your friends much longer than that. But I, I look around and I see that's true that the people who are a vital part of my life right now, uh, yeah, we're not seven years ago. And there are people who seven years ago were a big part of my life. And now I am, you know, barely talk to if at all. In some ways that's reassuring. It's like, well, you know, it is a natural process. The, the friendships coming and going. But one thing that, uh, Megan and I have really noticed is, and, and she and I became friends because we're writers. We knew each other from the writing community, from the romance writing community, met each other at a convention in like 2014. And now she happens to live here in Santa Fe, but it's kind of a coincidence that brought her to Santa Fe. My pendant fell off there. It's got a little gap on it. I'm going to have to fix that on the ring. So we had this conversation, it was during the pandemic, during lockdown, because I know that we were, it was one of our um, campfire cocktail hours where we went out to um, Santa Fe Brewing HQ, where they would have the campfires, send the chairs around it, and you could drink outside, you could order, you know, another round of drinks and a cord of wood, (laughs) not a cord, but a bundle of wood to put on the fire. And I know it was snowing, and we were just talking about who were our close friends, who were really in our intimate circle now. And she was talking about how that's changed for her. Um, in, you know, this sort of midlife place, who are your really good friends? So one thing I did love about the article too, was that there were discussions of how do you maintain friendships? You know, like, do I don't know that you would necessarily go to, I don't know if I would go to counseling. Uh, but there are definitely friendships that I kind of wish we'd talked about things. Um, and she talks about how to manage that envy in the relationship being, especially if you are people who've come together because you're working in the same field and doing similar things, uh, you know, how, how people take care of each other, knowing that the reality of envy is there. And I really love that about it. It's like, no, we don't, (laughs) we don't say, oh, you shouldn't be envious because human beings are envious, right? It's one of the seven deadly sins. She, she says that she thinks it's the least popular of the seven deadly sins. And I think that there's probably a good point to that. Nobody wants to admit it. You know, it's easier to be admit to being lazy or greedy or lustful, but It's harder to admit that to envy, but we are all envious. And so we just have to know that our friends may have envy for us and we have to manage that if the friendship's valuable. So I thought that that was really, yeah, insightful. That's what I've been thinking about. And I'm still reading Juliet Morillier's Daughter of the Forest, which I'm going to have to go in and fix because the transcript really barfs on her name. And it gets my name wrong every time. I have to go and fix that too. But I'm I'm opting in. I'm keeping the professional model. I think that the uh, paying my $20 a month, I think the transcript's really good. I don't know how many people are reading it, but it's it's been a minimal amount of effort compared to what I tried to do before. And the expense of that, totally different. So go Zencaster on that. Uh, Zencaster Pro Model at $20 a month. Works great. So yeah, I'm really loving Daughter of the Forest. And it's remarkable to me how much, how many parallels there are to the Mark of the Tala. Um, it's really just, which I've actually got right here because I was talking books, right? Here it is. The mark of the tunnel. (laughs) Uh, yeah. It, if I had, if I had read daughter of the forest, it's like, I would suspect that I had like cribbed stuff directly from that story, but I hadn't. So isn't that interesting that those story archetypes 
are there. Uh, so many parallels. Things that I wasn't consciously drawing on at all. I think that's why we love these fairy tale stories because of these old tale archetypes in them that speak to us. And now I'm going to go right. So hope you all have a wonderful Tuesday. Chime in on the R Fantasy Reddit tonight, the AMA, uh, supporting the Read for Pixels project. And I will talk to you all on Thursday. You all take care. Bye bye.